Well, good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Alan Belcher, faculty member in the First Year Center here at Ashford. I'll be the host for this session, which is titled Instructor Presence Training, Sustainable Practices Supporting Student Retention and Success. Your microphones will be muted for the presentation, but I encourage you to post your questions and comments in the chat. Uh, the presenters will be uh, responding to those as we go along. Also, keep your eye on the chat for a link that I will post about midway and then again later in the session uh, for uh, feedback, uh, a survey link uh, for feedback on this session. And let me take just a moment to introduce our speakers. Dr. Michelle Rosser Majors is a professor in the College of Arts and Sciences, and she is currently lead faculty for uh, the Bachelor and Master of Arts in Psychology programs. Sandra Ribior is program lead for Applied Behavioral Science and Environmental Management and sustain Sustainability Emphasis. She teaches in all of those programs. Dr. Christy McMahon is an associate professor in the Department of Health Sciences here at Ashford. She's program lead for the Bachelor of Healthcare Admin and for the Health and Wellness Program. Dr. Stephanie Anderson is an associate professor in the College of Arts and Sciences. She holds a BA in Psychology and Sociology from the University of Nebraska at Kearney and MA and PhD in Social Psychology from the University of Kansas. And with that, colleagues, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Belcher. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Rosser Majors, and I we all hope that everyone is enjoying the TLC conference so far. It, everything I've been to has been great. We also hope that you find the information that we will share today about professional development and the sustainability of that development, and particularly that of instructor presence based on the community of inquiry model. Today, we will share results of our professional development series, as well as offer some advice based on how we got to where we are and today with this series. We will also discuss new findings and what happens now, including a challenge to ourselves, to other instructors, and to online institutions. Please feel free to post questions during the presentation. The presenters will all rotate around and try to answer them as they're posted. You may be asking yourself, why do I need professional development? I'm pretty good at what I do. Or why should I encourage others in my organization to invest valuable time above and beyond their typical responsibilities? They're already so busy. The answer is that even a minimal investment in professional development is sure to reap rewards. Professional development opportunities foster gains in retention, success, and satisfaction crucial measures by any estimation. This will very likely contribute to institutional goals, mission, and values. For those who work in educational institutions, providing opportunities for professional development or encouraging pursuit of additional training opportunities helps support and model lifelong learning. As technology advances and we find ourselves confronted with new tools, new challenges, and new opportunities, it will be necessary for us to adapt to the ever-changing landscape. And finally, we must ask ourselves, do we really know everything there is to know about our craft? Are we already as great as we can be? Speaking from personal experience, even after years in the classroom, I know I'm still learning how to be a better teacher. Professional development offers each of us a chance to pursue excellence as we develop our skills more fully through targeted training so that we can offer our students the very best. As Dr. Anderson mentioned, professional development is important to help instructors to learn and refine our skills. Instructors must be adaptable and learn new technologies to enhance their classrooms, especially as more and more schools are using distance learning. However, it is essential that professional development is effective. No one wants to waste their time. And there's a lot of skepticism on the value of professional development and its lasting effects. Research has found that experienced teachers are less likely to participate in professional development, especially if it relates to English proficiency and cultural diversity. 
Furthermore, most teachers feel that training is boring and not interactive, or it might be too difficult or too time consuming to apply it. And they often feel that it might just be a fad and something new will come along next year. But we are here to tell you that instructor presence training is effective, easy to apply, and sustainable. Michelle, you are on mute. Got it. To start, I wanna share a couple of quotes to create a foundation for what we will discuss during the segment. Consider thinking about these as we discuss our experiences about creating successful and sustainable content. Number one, effective professional development depends on how the training is perceived, planned, and executed. And number two, the way you structure your team sends a very strong message about what your team is currently prioritizing and deprioritizing. Hopefully the second quote will also come back to your mind when we discuss the need to keep training alive. Training that works and is sustainable should stay alive. So to start out, we learned a whole lot through the process of developing content, more than I think we ever thought we'd learn. One of the biggest things is to be cognizant of diverse ideas, opinions, and even the comfort level of sharing self in the online platform. So this is just a list that we compiled kind of going through our experiences and it lists the variables that we believe help this professional development to actually have the level of success that it's had. So first, the developers in any type of successful team should be diverse to create a more holistic product. Don't seek people just like yourself. Seek developers with differing levels of training and skill. Seek developers who look outside the box and are willing to seek answers, even answers that aren't identified yet. Second, be mindful that everyone has something to add that can increase the success and value of your project. Take notes about the ideas that come up during your conversations and then revisit them when you're developing the content because it can make your product much more rich and much more successful. Next, make project assignments based on experience and expertise. Know what your people like to do, what they want to do, and what they're excited about doing. What areas do the content developers have the most understanding about? I know even in our team, we found as we, we started learning more, there were some of us that really flowed to one area more than the other. And so we really stood out at the areas that we wanted to be you know, a huge, a bigger part of. Also, what areas have they already been applying and they really believe in? Because trust me, when you are, when you are, when you believe in something, you're going to create something that is um, much more intriguing and will make your people more enthusiastic about being involved in it. If you're creating something you don't believe in, they're going to know it. Next would be knowing your audience. We knew almost immediately that social presence would be one of the biggest hurdles to address due to the great big divide between beliefs about sharing oneself online. We had to make our training doable for everyone, even those that felt uncomfortable in that area. We also knew that cognitive presence, which includes critical thinking, modeling, and really, really hearty feedback, could overwhelm some of our audience, our instructors, because it takes more time to be that instructor. So hence, we knew that we had to make the price of their time with our students absolutely worth it. Lastly, we also tried to ask questions of our potential audience, our instructors. What did they believe about social teaching and cognitive presence? What did it mean to them? What did they believe that would look like? We could then bridge their beliefs with our research and also address potential false beliefs, creating a more holistic and diverse training module that met most people's needs. And of course, I think we all know, make deadlines. Without these, your stress is gonna increase and the product may be delivered under par. It's never worth your time to deliver under par product. Be willing to seek out answers outside the group. Not every group has all the answers, 
be willing to do your research, be willing to ask those questions and try to turn over as many of those stones as you can. Ask big questions, ask the hard questions. And lastly, be willing to learn from your colleagues, your students and your training audience. We have compiled a, a few fun slides to show what we had in mind for this training series. Firstly, we wanted faculty to be truly engaged to make the, the training relevant to them. And by including interactive content, we wanted to make it fun and avoid or prevent instructors from falling asleep. <laughs> Next, we wanted to meet instructors where they were at based on their level of comfort to include each of the instructor presence dimensions within their classroom. So it is good to push outside of your comfort zone, but somebody that has a level zero will likely not end up at level 10. So we wanted to meet them where they were at and then improve or integrate at least a couple of the options that we presented to them. So options are very powerful and they help instructors pick and choose what they are comfortable with. For example, uh, when speaking about social presence, an instructor might be very hesitant in using a video or creating a video of themselves. However, they may be very willing to create a Voki or some other animated character and then some audio alongside that. And then also what we wanted to do is for instructors and students to really come together and enjoy their time in the classroom together to really have that connection within the classroom without creating frustration or disconnect. Essentially, our goal was for instructors to be present within the classroom so that students can meet and reach their goals or and ideally exceed them. Based on all of these examples that Dr. Rabior just outlined, I think you can see that the Instructor Presence Certification Series really truly is different. But we took this one step further. We wanted to conduct some research to, to really test um, the effectiveness of this series. So our research team, composed of Dr. Sandra Rabior, Michelle Rosser Majors, Christine McMahon, Yolanda Harper, Laura Slowinski, Andrea Wilson, and myself, Stephanie Anderson, along with our amazing media specialist, Becky Hayes, designed training based on our own extensive research and experience with practical examples to make the material immediately applicable. In addition, as mentioned, we conducted analyses to test our hypothesis that completion of the instructor presence series of modules really truly makes a positive difference. Faculty who completed the entire series and agreed to participate were included in our study. We measured levels of cognitive, social, and teaching presence in courses prior to the training and afterward. Our analysis suggests that instructor presence training was the primary factor contributing to gains in both student success and retention. Application of all three areas, cognitive, social, and teaching presence, demonstrated significant improvement following the training. Student success increased and drop rates decreased, a finding that is sustained in courses where participants are applying the instructor presence strategies. Although our institution did experience a change in learning management system from eCollege to Canvas, this was not a significant variable contributing to the increase in retention and success we saw in our participants' classes. In fact, instructor presence strategy applications continue to be the only significant factor in the sustained improvement of drop rates and success. All of the instructor presence variables were significantly related to the improvements. So as Dr. Anderson has, has detailed, this is a pretty exciting thing happening and we want to summarize it up a little bit. So, and explain a little bit for, further about how we did this. So in our initial analysis, we actually looked at four months prior to the training and four months after the training was completed. 
And for those of you that have attended some of our presentations, you know that we did find that significant improvement in our dropout rates and our student success rates for those instructors that had completed the modules and received their certification. In addition, we found that numerous variables, including no matter the program the instructor was aligned to, the whether it was undergraduate, whether it was graduate instructor alignment, no matter how many courses they had taught, no matter how many years they had taught at the institution, no matter their degree, a master's or a doctoral, even their levels of performance, our instructional quality review performance reviews, our what we call our faculty activity reviews, none of this made any difference. And even our student evaluations had no significance on this improvement that we were seeing. But as Dr. Anderson said, that the only thing that we couldn't really test back then, well, actually two things. We couldn't test whether the learning management system that we changed to between pre and post made a difference and whether or not it was sustainable. Because as we all know, we've gone to training and that training dies away. It works for a year and then no one talks about it again. We wanted to show that significantly this training is sustainable. Many of our past presentations have talked about the satisfaction levels of students increasing, of our instructors increasing. So the sustainability piece is a huge piece that we hope will encourage everyone who has not ever received this type of training to consider it because it makes such a big difference. So hence that follow-up analysis that we did was one year after the completion of the training. And again, to really hit home, the LMS difference did not appear to have significance on the improvement. The training itself, that exposure to that training is the only thing that we found as a significant variable affecting dropout rates and student success in those classes where the instructors had been certified. So what does this mean? This means that the instructor present strategy sustainably improved dropout rates and student success when, you, when utilized by the instructors. The, the key is that we did not want a training and the instructors based on the results, it wasn't a take it once and then forget about it kind of training. The strategies that are shared and the skills that are learned by the instructors are indeed sustainable. And that is why we have seen these dropout rates and student success rates improve. Given our own experiences with this information and our analyses of the application of the modules, we feel confident that instructor presence training can be a valuable component in any teacher's toolbox. As educators ourselves, we have utilized the various elements, teaching, cognitive and social presence in our own classrooms benefiting from increased engagement and positive results in terms of student success. And as researchers, we know that these gains are significant and worth sharing as they are replicable. Thus, we will continue promoting instructor presence as an essential development tool, assisting educators within online classrooms across disciplines. We propose a challenge to like-minded instructors and institutions seek professional development opportunities that have demonstrated efficacy and implement changes that will benefit both you and your students. For example, one easy and effective place to start as outlined in the Instructor Presence series would be to consider applying the strategies to course design, shifting focus from memorization of material to mastery of material via quizzing opportunities or including dynamic images or videos to help students engage with and better understand complex material. Even small changes such as this are likely to lead to big results, benefiting not only the student, but also you as the instructor. And this is a sustainable practice that will continue contributing to improvements in outcomes, not just in the immediate classroom, but in the long term, benefiting future sections too. We plan to continue building collaborative teams to research instructor presence development strategies and ways to create even more opportunities for faculty, as well as to investigate the outcomes of such strategies. If what we have shared so far today sounds interesting to you, or if you haven't personally been certified in instructor presence, we encourage you to check out the training modules via the link below 
which may allow you to meet your own professional development requirements. To learn more or share this information to improve online learning environments throughout the educational community, check out the website, www.instructorpresence.com. The Instructor Presence Training Modules covers all three areas of presence, teaching, cognitive, and social. And it's very important to understand that to have true success in the online teaching environment, each one of these is essential. The training includes six self-paced modules with interactive assessment tools. Teaching Presence reviews the framework or the bones of the classroom and the importance of clear instructions, detailed feedback, and behavior modeling. Social Presence reviews the importance of personalizing the classroom. Effective, cohesive, and interactive social presence is reviewed, such as like including humor and emotion, and including those in like your announcements and discussion posts. Social presence helps develop that trusting relationship between the student and the instructor. The cognitive presence modules, they discuss the importance of relating real world experience to course concepts and critical thinking. Instructors are shown the importance of sharing resources, drawing connections, and expanding the conversation. And in each of these modules, you're going to find specific examples and how the instructors have the opportunity to interact with their students and how they can apply what they have learned. The skills taught are easy and can be applied immediately in current teaching platforms. Thank you, Dr. McMahon. And thank you to this whole group. We have worked really hard. I don't think we mentioned this project's been going on since it started developing in 2016. We went live with some of our training in 2018, and it became a, became a certification program in, I believe, 2019. So as we finish this up, we're almost at time. What we'd like to do is encourage anyone listening that if you are interested in the viability of these types of practical strategies for your courses, for your institutions, reach out to us. We are always interested in collaborating and advancing findings as well as developing new strategies that fall under this instructor presence umbrella, specifically anything that helps students, our learners have success to meet their goals. And so now, although we've been trying to answer questions in the chat and I've noticed there haven't been a whole lot, um, but if you have any questions now, Dr. Belcher, if we have enough time, we'd love to take those questions. We do have a few minutes. So folks, if you have any, please post them right there in the chat. Seeing some familiar faces in the room. Thank you. And as people, if they're considering questions and different things, or and I know we've given a lot of different presentations and hopefully you've received a little new information about the sustainability piece. This has kind of been a secret. We're not showing a lot of our data because we are preparing to put out a peer reviewed couple of different journal articles on our um, research. But we do hope that this little tidbit helps you even believe in this more. And you know, during this crazy year, Ashford University chose to make this training available um, to anyone outside of the university as well and to help support especially institutions that are going online that they don't exactly know how this is supposed to happen so you know we're really appreciative to Ashford University for this we're very appreciative to Ashford University for creating the certification programs out of the modules and we're really appreciative we see our awesome media specialist in the room we can't give Becky Hayes enough kudos for putting up with us for several years working on this, as well as, again, working with all of you, even out there um, in the World Wide Web on, we just think it's very worth it. We think our students are loving it. We think our instructors are loving it. And so we do hope that you'll write down our emails, contact us after this. You know, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to see if you have more strategies. We'd love to create additional um, training for our own faculty to, again, go back to our challenge and keep this alive because when something's sustainable, it shouldn't die. And that is our goal right now, is to keep it in the forefront, that more people will realize that this might be something, a real key variable, because teaching online, retention and success is tough. This might just be a small piece of the puzzle, but at least it's a piece of the puzzle. So we really encourage people to, to ask questions, reach out to us by email, check the website out, check the training out. We're, we're pretty fired up about it. 
Uh, Michelle and others, there's one quick question from Allison. Have you pulled data on any faculty that have opted to retake the module? Um, actually, Allison, that is not a part of our IRB, our approved research, because we only are looking at data from the original participants that agreed to participate. And so, however, Becky doesn't know this either yet, we are hoping <laughs> that starting next year, we're going to be putting in another um, IRB for approval to look at additional data where we can look at some of these different um, variables. But during our first um, run of research, we were unable to do that because that was not a part of our pool. I hope that answered that question. Sounds good. Thank you uh, to all of our presenters. And I'd like to thank all of our audience members for being with us today. Uh, do hope you'll take a moment and uh, follow that link for a quick survey about this presentation. And remember that you can access all of the presentations at the TLC online event page. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the TLC. Thanks for being here today and we'll see you at another session. <laughs>